And now we're going to look at some examples for the APA so we get some very clear idea of how this functions. Here is an inline citation and you can see that we have the author here and we have the date. However, the APA guideline is you need to have the date inside the parentheses. Remember it's called parenthetic book. We need to have the parentheses. So, Gazaniga 1967 flash pictures to the right or left visual field of each patient whose corpus callosum had been surgically severed. Please remember, space before, space after parentheses, but no space inside the parentheses just before and after. Very easy to get mixed up on that. Let's look at this example here. In one of the earliest studies, Anad China and Sign, 1961, researchers presented a variety of stimuli to a yogi as he meditated. Anad, China, and Sign reported no disruption of the yogi's alpha wave as indicated by EEG recordings by a tuning fork or a hand clap. Oh boy, that is long, right? Two sentences. What's the point here? The point here is we have a reference up here which looks good. I don't see a problem. You can see the ampersand is used there, not A and D. Then we have the same paper being cited again down here. However, do you remember the special rule that applies to this? The first time we list the authors, we list them all, but then the second time we can use at all because it's three or more authors. So we have the at all. We also have the date. Why do we have the date? It's in the same paragraph, it's being repeated. But remember that if the authors were outside the parentheses, and if you're outside, you cannot use ampersand, you must use the A-N-D, then in that case, we would not need the date anymore, would we? Because that's that other special case. Too many special cases, aren't there? But in this situation, we have the multiple authors, three or more, and we use the at all. Personality changes may occur later in life. Newgarten 73, Newgarten and Hasgard 76, and Newgarten 1977. So in this case, we have the same author but different years. And we also have one author with a different author. And then the question becomes how do we align these? So in this case, we take Newgarten, since he's the same person. And we combine the dates by splitting them up with a comma. So just use a comma there. And then which one goes first? The smallest date goes first. So 1973 is first, 1977 is second because 1977 is later. The next issue is we have Newgarten and we have Newgarten. So which one goes first? Here we have a semicolon, right? Remember that semicolon between authors, between different authors. So here's Newgarten, here's Newgarten and Asgard. So here we have Newsgarten and that's all. There's nothing more here. So empty, that's empty. That will be earlier than using the H. H becomes later because H goes after empty. That's a general rule of thumb. If something is empty, that's the same as being before A or before zero. The concept of chunking was introduced by Miller, Miller 1956. Clearly you can see there's a problem here, right? And this problem is you don't need to repeat Miller. You just have the year. So in APA we have the author on the outside of the parentheses inside the sentence introduced by Miller and then we have the year by itself, just like that. That's acceptable. Other authors focus on the role of effect. Zonzik, Zo, uh, Zanak, American psychologist, 1984. So here you can see there's a comma and then we have a journal name. However, in APA, very clearly we don't need a journal name. We just need the author, comma, year. And let's pay attention to that. Before comma, no space. After comma, one space, 
Then the year of the publication, 1984. That's all you need.